G'day everyone, it's Angela Ramora here. I'm your favorite Australian and the real estate dingo bringing you another awesome vlog. And today I'm talking about how to find a deal when there's no inventory. Let's get it started. Well, I'm sorry to say guys, you're crap out of luck because there's absolutely no available inventory right now in the US. Uh, no guys, look, I always said that there's nothing wrong with any piece of real estate as long as the price is right, okay? So if for whatever reason um, you can't find a deal in the market that you're currently in right now, look in another market. I mean, you've got 50 states in the US, I think if I'm correct. Yeah, there's around 50. Anyway, it doesn't matter. So there's a lot of other markets. There's a lot of markets that are more on a micro type level. Okay, I'm based here in Toledo. I still to this day feel like a kid in a candy store. There's deals falling off trees. I encourage you guys to look um, into the Midwest. Um, as the East Coast and West Coast recovers, the Midwest is always a few steps behind. So it doesn't, you know, doesn't go up in value nowhere near the East Coast and West Coast. And there's still a lot of foreclosures hitting the market here. So those are just a few little tips right now. If there's nothing available in the US, go to Europe. Go to Australia. The Australian market has been tanking for the last year and a half. Go to the Bahamas. I own a lot of real estate in the Bahamas. So what I'm trying to say, guys, is the world is your oyster. Like, you know, you can get from here to Europe um, in eight hours. Like, I just flew there not too long ago. So everything is so close. Um, you know, it's, it's amazing to live in, in the times that we live um, right now. So a few other little, I guess, alternate strategies for you guys um, if, if you can't find a deal what you should do. Uh, look, I, I think that maybe you should double down on your acquisition efforts. Um, you know, spend more time knocking on doors. Um, uh, spend, uh, uh, you know, more time prospecting. Submit more offers. Um, you just get more, get very active, send more yellow letters, you know, network with more real estate agents. I mean, really, really leave no stone unturned. Like I've said this so many times before um, that uh, real estate is a numbers game, right? So the more that you commit to the numbers on a daily basis from submitting offers, knocking on doors, shaking hands, kissing babies, meeting real estate agents, submitting offers, submitting offers and submitting offers. I said that like four times, but you have to submit offers if you want to buy a property, right? So I think it's very important that you continue submitting offers and eventually you will pick up that deal. Um, look, another thing that you can um, consider doing, I do not recommend it. I don't like it. I wouldn't do it. But what folks tend to do when there aren't any uh, um, uh, good deals available from a buy, fix and flip standpoint, right? You know, the real estate agent says highest and best. I would always encourage you to say, I wish the highest bidder all the best. That's what I do anyway. Um, but what folks are doing when they can't, you know, make margin on a specific flip, they start getting into new construction. I see it happening a lot right now. They start getting into subdivisions or they start getting into structural renovations that are going to require a lot of capital and a lot of effort just to make a small profit. I wouldn't touch it, guys. Um, I like to be the master of my fate, the captain of my soul. I do not want to let any outside influences affect um, uh, my potential profit. Uh, those outside influences could be an architect, a structural engineer, the city approving how high you can go, how wide you can build. I mean, you know, I want to keep everything in house. I prefer buying properties that just need minor cosmetic rehabs or a bigger rehab where I don't have to, you know, go out of my way to do a complete floor plan reconstruction, get licensed contractors and pull the various 17,000 permits that the city wants just so they can make a dime, right? So try and keep as much of it in-house as you can. Um, so look, I, it's not my recommendation. I wouldn't go down that path, but you can if you really, really, really know what you're doing. I know a lot of folks doing that in, ex in expensive markets. Another solution is this, sit on cash, baby. I mean, cash is king, always has been and always will be. There is nothing wrong with doing well for six, seven, eight, nine years. The market reaches a certain cycle, right, where it's probably gonna have a downturn and you wanna be, you want that gunpowder dry, baby. You wanna be able to go to town and buy every single property if there is a market decline. So I don't think there's anything wrong with sitting on cash for six, 12 months, even two years. I know it sucks. Inflation goes up, you lose money, you're feeling like it's burning a hole in your pocket. But guys, if you make a mistake with that capital, it's gonna cost you a lot more than it would by letting it sit there and do nothing. 
Okay, let me repeat that. If you make a mistake by investing that capital in a deal that might not be as profitable, it's going to cost you a lot more than it would be just by leaving that money there and doing nothing. My dad, love him to death, he said, son, if you're going to go broke, you might as well go broke on the beach, sitting, sunbathing and doing nothing, then going broke by doing a job, a flip in this instance, or investing in real estate, and not making any money, right? So you might as well go broke doing nothing than going broke doing something, right? As in, you know, spending 14 hours a day trying to make a deal work that needs, you know, full-blown structural rehab or whatnot. So um, guys, that's pretty much it. I hope that you found value in um, my blog. Um, just summarizing everything once again, the world is your oyster. Be flexible, be mobile. If the numbers do not make sense in your market, look elsewhere. Um, there's always a depressed market somewhere where there are so many deals that it's absolutely mind boggling. And do not cry over a missed opportunity, please, because there's always going to be another one around the corner. Um, you know, every single time I got frustrated when I missed out on a deal, another better one came up the next day or the next week or the next month or whatever. Okay, that's it. I'm going to shut up for now. Hey, I'd love to hear your thoughts on what you think is going on in the economy right now. Are we um, getting ready for a downturn? We're kind of, you know, we're kind of at the, the peak of the cycle, in my opinion. Uh, are, you, are you stashing cash? Are you investing? What kind of rehabs are you doing? Are you doing structural rehabs? Are you subdividing? Are you doing new construction? Are you investing in the Bahamas? Australia, Australia's caught my attention. First time in 15 years, I think the Australian market is, is um, pretty, pretty cheap, I guess, somewhat. Um, guys, that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Comment below. I'm Angela Ramora. I'm your favorite Australian and the real estate dingo. Have a great day.